We've also got in our indispensables uh, some safety components. Definitely. Now, people ask us all the time, what should we use for uh, keeping ourselves safe on the internet? If you've been going through some suspect web pages or other kinds of things, then you might have to just check and see whether or not any nasties have made their way onto your laptop or computer, and then you can take steps to make sure that they don't do any damage by using a few security devices that we're going to talk about right now. Mm. So again, Microsoft offers a good one called uh, the online scanner or yep. the safety scanner. It's a, it's a rather large download, um, but once you've done it, it'll keep itself up to date and it looks for particular and very recent uh, bits of malware. Definitely, and the signatures that keeps on checking, so updates to make sure that anything that's new that's come on board will uh, be recognized as malware and will be recognized as something that's nasty for your computer and it will go through and check it out. Being from Microsoft and if you're using a Windows PC, it quickly finds any sort of changes that aren't supposed to be there mm. and takes uh, the appropriate actions. A useful tool. Very, it's fairly, fairly new. This, this very new. They didn't well. used to have this, but right. this has just only come out in the last couple of years. It's downloadable. It's free, so you don't need to pay for it. It's a one-time tool, so you can use it, and then, you know, you don't have to use it. It's not like a continuous firewall or antivirus software. It's a one-time tool to take off anything that you might have just picked up. Mm. Cool. Another one that's been around for a while. Uh, but that has a very good reputation and is often used is called Malware Bytes. Yeah. Now, Malware Bytes is specifically, uh, it looks for stuff that goes through in your um, setup and opening screen, sort of like your boot sector viruses. Yes, that's right. Now, a lot of other virus scanners won't pick up boot sector viruses because these viruses take effect before the operating system is even loaded onto your computer when you first start it up. This particular antivirus software is designed to look and check your boot sector to make sure that if there is anything in there, it won't be able to do any more damage and it'll get taken off using malware bytes before the operating system comes up. That's right. It has a great reputation. It's been around for a while. There's a lot of people working on this, so it's, it's a good one to check. Now, if you're thinking that you've got a virus or and none of these tools is picking it up, and, well, sometimes uh, you won't be able to even download your tools because some viruses are smart enough to recognize that you're trying to get rid of them and they'll stop you from using your internet browser even to go on these sites. Mm. There's a tool called Hijack This, mm -hmm. which uh, will run on your computer and it will generate a very low level system report of your system. And you can give that to an IT professional or a friend in the family or something that knows. Because it's really granular, IT. right? It goes yeah. right down to like even the hardware layers. Yeah, Hijack This has been around for quite a while. Yeah. And uh, if you visit forums uh, and so forth, asking if you've got some kind of malware on your machine, quite often they'll just say now, post your Hijack This log. Yeah. So you, you download this program, Hijack This, you can find it from a Google search and run it and it generates a, it's a very long text file. Yeah, so which it's basically is, a report. It's a report, it's details on all the services and yeah. drivers and versions that are running on your system. Yeah. And an IT professional can generally analyze this and see if something sticks out that shouldn't be there. Definitely. Something wrong. So again, quite techy. Yeah. Uh, hijack this, but if all else fails, um, it's a good thing to use. Yeah, because it'll give you a rundown of exactly what's happening on your box and any type of IT professional that specializes in this type of service will definitely be very, very happy to see that report. He'll be able to utilize that report and hopefully get to the bottom of it for you. That's right. And then, well, we have... Uh, Safe browsing or sure. anonymous browsing. Since we're talking about security and we're talking about online safety, I think it uh, definitely serves us to mention the fact that there is an online web browser called Tor, the Tor project, which gives you basically internet anonymity where you can browse online. It, it doesn't show where you're from. It doesn't show uh, any, it doesn't pick up any of the analytics that normally any of your web browsers will do so that you don't have to have people know exactly what your internet habits are, what your purchase history is, all that sort of stuff that you might do through your normal browser. That stuff is usually collected and used by Google or any of the other web browsers being um, uh, Chrome, all of them. All of them now, because really, uh, probably the most obvious uh, lack of anonymity that comes out in web browsing today is through advertising. Definitely. And what, what uh, most ISPs and services will do is log your IP address. That's yep. the unique address that your computer gets. Yeah. And they'll remember it. 
So uh, Google, a lot of them, ads, Facebook, a lot of these will remember the things you've clicked on. Yeah. Uh, so if you've looked at football and basketball and perhaps you're interested in cooking, yeah. right, you'll find that you start to see ads popping up which seem to be random, but they're not random. Yeah. And they'll come up and they'll be cooking and they'll be footy. And it's logged and categorized. Yeah, based on your, your browsing address. habits. That's right. Exactly. And your IP address, the best way to think of it is like this. If you've got a car, it's got a registration plate hmm. and on that registration plate is unique where your your computer also has an isp address which is unique to your computer yep. so it's just like the reg on your car so what happens is when you start searching through the internet you start clicking on certain things let's say you're going to venice and you want to start looking at holiday destinations and stuff like that you start getting ads popping up specifically about those holiday destinations that you were talking about that's right now that isn't random that's based on the analytics of what you've been clicking on so you get targeted advertising that's specific to what you've been browsing yeah. and it might be good in the long run i guess but if you don't like that if you don't want to have people knowing exactly where you've been or what you've been looking at and you just want that bit of anonymity then tor is what you need to use that's right it'll create multiple hops around sites and it'll encrypt that traffic so the source sites that you're looking at or the ad collectors won't be able to uh, determine the source of the browsing, i.e. you. And so it's just considered an anonymous hit. Yeah, so in Google, you type in Tor, it'll take you to the Tor Project's website, and then you can download it. It's free, mm. and it works like any other browser. It's just that it gives you online anonymity and it keeps you safe. 